Well, today on Nation, the Window Cleaners Podcast, we are talking all about hard water. Some of you guys deal with it a lot more than others, but everybody deals with hard water, so stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. I hope you dig it. There is a 180 plus episodes. It comes out every single week and it's been going on for over three years. So you got tons and tons of content to binge. Lots of the content to catch up on. Hopefully it's better than a cat video, but either way, thanks for being here. Now, if you are one of the cool kids, certified cool kid, then you watch every episode, you thumbs up the video, you comment on YouTube, and even more importantly, you put your orders in through me. Shameless plug of the day. It is because of you that I get to eat food on Thanksgiving. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Virtual high five to all you awesomeness people. Uh, if you want to put your orders in through me, because you do, right? Right? Come on. I'm a nice guy. Uh, call me or text me. 862 312 2026 windowcleaner.com. We want to be your uh, company for all your supplies and I want to be your personal rep. Look at that. Look at that. Anyway, I do want to say this. Last week, I asked you guys to uh, thumbs up the video on YouTube and comment because our comments have been low and you guys knocked it out of the park. Tons of you commented. If you're watching it on YouTube, throw a comment on now. Say, what's up? Where are you from? Uh, tell me about hard water, and then more importantly, if I miss any miss anything or you got any other tips or tricks to add, please do. I would love, love, love for you to put that on there. And then that's also how I conversate. I get to uh, kind of see the interaction. So that's super awesome, man. By the way, also, if I put an order in for you, it's hard to do this backwards. Uh, and you want a sticker, just be like, yo, Jersey, throw me a sticker. Those stickers you only get if I put your order in, and it's a limited edition sticker which we ended up getting a double batch, so we have them longer, but every time we run out of a batch, we're going to change the sticker design, and uh, there are some of you who have, like, dozens of stickers, so I think that's super awesome. By the way, uh, shoot me a picture if you want to my email of all your stickers. I want to start posting them on Facebook. Or go to my Facebook page, Jersey WCR Nation. Longest intro ever. I'm so sorry, but today we are... Oh, before I go any farther, shout-outs. I want to say what's up to Brandon. Strzuski. Brandon, we've been talking for how long? And I knew I was going to butcher your name. But uh, what's up? He's my homeboy from Wisconsin. Uh, old alma mater. Uh, Marshall and Lorenz. What's going on, guys? Uh, by the way, they were like tag teaming. Like one guy found the podcast. was like, dude, you should watch it. So thank you very much for uh, spreading the word. Uh, Patty Blakesley. What's going on? Uh, Kyle Mecklaff, The man, the myth, the legend himself. What's going on? Anyway, so today we are talking about hard water. Now, I want to preface this by saying I'm going to talk about some products. And I never, ever, ever talk about products per se. Why? Because this is supposed to be informative. Yes, I give you the blurb for uh, order your supplies through me, shameless plugs here and there, because obviously that's how I make my money. But I never really want to plug products except this episode. I'm going to tell you how to do it. I'm going to tell you what I charge for it and some products that I use. Now, let's start off by saying hard water is a deposit on the glass, right? There's different severities of hard water. I have seen some amazingly grotesque hard water stains, and I've seen super light ones. where People are like, oh, you got hard water, you just take some steel wool and take it off. Yeah, those are like new and light stains. If you can do that, that's awesome. Take it off normally. But anything else... It falls under the restoration category. Now, in restoration, you charge restoration prices. I know, I know people are like, yeah, but it's helping people. I can't clean a window and then leave that. And if that's you, I'm not telling you how to do something. I'm not telling you how to be right or wrong. I'm just some guy with a mic and a computer. But anytime I do restoration, I'm going to charge for it. And the reason is, is the chemicals take uh, cost money and the process takes time. Even on the easy stuff. It takes knowledge and it takes time. We're dealing with acids. We're dealing with big machinery. If you're getting a full kit, those can be thousands of dollars uh, in equipment. 
I always want to have somebody understand the fact that if I'm talented enough, informed enough, if I know enough to take something off and do something that others can't, I'm going to charge for that knowledge. They say, if um, it's taken me 15 years to learn how to clean a, a window in 30 seconds, you're not paying me for the 30 seconds. You're paying me for the 15 years, right? That is the biggest kind of thing to wrap your head around. You're paid for experience. Now, if I hire an, uh, a mechanic, and I was just going to say SEO, it's not SEO, MS. E, whatever you know one of those certified mechanics that go to the fancy school to be like super smart i'm gonna pay that guy more because he knows more right my confidence i'm paying for confidence if some guy's like yeah i, I fix cars on the side you're always gonna pay that guy less it's just it's known because he's doing it on the side he may not know enough may not know as much right he doesn't do it all the time that's kind of where all this comes into play now, before anybody sends me an angry email, which, by the way, if you want to, it's jersey at windowcleaner.com. Drop a line anyway. Say what's up. Send me some pictures of hard water. But if you are doing something that requires the knowledge, you're going to make the, 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 the price. And I always say before you send me some angry emails about, oh, you're always trying to charge more, I am. I am. I'm always trying to charge the most that I can while still having an amazingly successful business. You should too. If you're always worried about not charging people, ah, well, we do it for free. Okay, well, you're leaving money on the table. That goes into play for rust. It goes into play for uh, hard water. If you're talking like algae on glass, that comes off with a normal process. I won't charge extra. But if I'm doing more work, I'm going to charge extra. Always. I hope you do too. We're not trying to nickel and dime somebody, but if you go into the mechanic and the mechanic says, oh, you got a bad fill in the blank. And all of a sudden you come back and he's like, oh, you had a bad fill in the blank and uh, blown out U joint and gearbox and you had to rebuild your transmission. The guy is going to tell you that before he does the work and charge you for the work, right? You're not going to go in and be like, oh yeah, you came in because your uh, windshield wipers are bad, but uh, don't worry. I uh, replaced, rebuilt your transmission for free. Like the concept is there. A lot of us are like, no, you know, I think if I do this good work, people will come back and that's cool. Like I said, you cannot do anything wrong. This is your business, literally. But there is something to be said for charging to get something done. Rust is one of those also where we're not talking about rust, but I'm going to talk anyways. That When rust is somewhere, it is so absolutely hard to get it off, say siding and things without the right chemicals. That my knowledge of the right chemicals Takes up for the process. Process is super fast. F9 bark for rust. Absolutely amazing. Pump up sprayer, spray it on. It disappears in front of your eyes. It's like crazy. Same thing with hard water. When I go in and my favorite exterior chemical is a spray on hose off, it doesn't take me very long to do. It just doesn't. Hard water does not take you a long time to do. There's lots of different ways to do it. But if somebody else goes out there with lime away or something... It's going to take them a long time to do it. So my knowledge is what I'm getting paid on, right? Hard water itself, when you are in a light situation, it looks like little, little droplets, right? Even hard, bad hard water, there's actually little droplets. And the interesting thing is, is that the reason that those droplets are on there and get harder and harder is because all the minerals that are in the water, as the water is evaporating, it condenses down into droplets, right? And those droplets eventually disappear. Well, those droplets that are so concentrated with the minerals that when the water evaporates, the minerals are left. This is why pure water cleaning works. When you're cleaning the glass, there's nothing left in the water to be left on the glass. But as that process is happening, it leaves a little bit. Barely enough for you to notice that first time, usually, unless you're in a really, really crappy area. But then as it happens and happens and happens, those little droplets that first formed leave a little bit of minerals on there and that actually clings the water. That's why when you see super hard bar, hard, super, <laughs> uh, that's why when you see super bad hard water, say that five times fast, um, it's all in like droplets. You're like, well, how did it get so concentrated? And it's because the water stuck to the minerals were already on the glass and kept shrinking and kept evaporating off of those. And it kept concentrating in those little droplets. Now also, 
if you notice those droplets, which is kind of an interesting thing, is they're bigger than a normal water droplet. And the reason is, is because as it's shrinking, it's depositing, right? But the most concentration is in the center. So it makes the droplet mark even bigger. And it's interesting. People think that water itself, like rain, dirties windows. And it does not dirty windows. Rain itself is actually pure. It's evaporated water, right? But as it comes down through the sky, it can hit things that are in the uh, air. It can in touch things on the way down. It can take all the minerals that are on the glass, right? Your glass being dirty. If all the water gets on there, it takes up all the dirt off the glass and then deposits it in little droplets. That's why it looks like the rain dirties your window. Same thing with hard water. Is it's all the water that comes down that's hard. If it's hard, it's not from rain. It's actually from something else. And the number one culprit is going to be sprinklers. Almost always when people are like, oh, I got hard water, what can I do? I don't know if it's hard water. Is it on the first floor? Yeah, yeah. Is it by like garden beds or your lawn or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, what's happening? And you can see those are the ones that have like the arcs of hard water where like the top of the window may not have hard water or the second floor window may not have hard water, but the first one does. It's because the sprinklers are spraying the glass. And almost everywhere, there's like two counties or something crazy in California that run ROs. Even with the water going through the pipes, it picks some stuff up, but they're pretty darn pure. But for the most spot part, and even in those really, really hard water areas where out of the tap, you're talking five, 600 TDS, still find a drink, just got a lot of minerals in it, right? We need minerals, not a bad thing. But for glass, it's not a good thing. So the harder the water is, when that sprinkler is on, you're just depositing minerals over and over and over and over and over and over. Now, if you remove water, that sprinkler damage, please, again, I'm not telling you what to do, but this is like a common sense, super nice thing to do. Tell the homeowner that's what it's from. They're going to be paying you a good amount of money for you to remove it. I will always, always tell them why they have hard water and how to fix it. I always say, with the sprinklers... You got to adjust the sprinklers. The sprinklers are what's creating the hard water. Have a your sprinkler guy come out. He'll adjust those for you. Let him know it's going on the glass. If you don't do that, it will come back. You can always have me come back and clean them uh, down the road. That at least gives them the price. Sometimes people are like, you know what? I just don't care. It's taken me two years. I, I'm not going to go through all the hassle of having a service call and these guys come out and I do my own sprinklers and blah, 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 blah. But at least they know. Another culprit that uh, comes in commercial settings is not necessarily the sprinklers, but it's the aggregate facade. Uh, in your area, you're going to have different types of facades. A facade meaning the outside of the building, right? Um, you are going to have uh, siding, not really in commercial, but sometimes. More than likely, you're going to have brick. Then you'll have Cream City brick, which again, all these three do not really put off hard water very often. But an aggregate or an exposed aggregate, those are the ones that's like concrete with big rocks, lots of minerals there. So every time it rains, that water hits the building, draws in a bunch of minerals as it's floating down the side of the building, and then gets on the glass. You're going to see a lot of that. That stuff, you'll see more splashed up from the sill. So what happens is as that water's running down the side of the building, it drops. The windows are always inset a little bit. It drops and hits the bottom sill and splashes onto the window. That's another, that's an aggregate hard water. That is not really solvable. Now, there are some sealants for stone and aggregate and everything else, and uh, I don't like them. So maybe you guys know one that I, I don't know. Maybe there's some awesome ones out there, but um, until that uh, time that I find one that I like, I really, uh, I don't have anything that I would recommend for that. But that type of building is pretty rare. Now, stucco can produce some of that also. Um, and then technically some of the bricks can drop, uh, efflorescence onto the window or kind of in that. And efflorescence is something different that actually comes from the brick itself and the mortar. So you'll see, it looks like patches of white on the brick. Uh, that's can sometimes come onto the glass. It's different minerals. Uh, but if it's on brick efflorescence remover actually works beautifully for that. And that's again, an F9 product. So if you've got questions on products, let me know. Obviously, I'm not telling you, I'm telling you the ones I like. And if you ever call me for any type of window cleaning stuff, sometimes people get mad, literally. Like once a month, somebody gets mad at me because I will not tell you 
the answer you want to hear. People call and be like, what's the best kind of rubber? I said, it's all personal preference. Yeah, but what one should I get? I'm not going to tell you that. What do you What do you need? Like, have you tried Black Diamond? It's super cheap. Try it out. Is that better than Ettore? Well, what's better? Well, I like Ettore. Well, then get Ettore. Yeah, but is Black Diamond better for cheaper? There is no better. Right? It's all personal preference. What do you need? What do you want? Same thing with this. Chemicals are one of those things that um, you have to have a plethora of chemicals because you never quite know what it is you're removing. So, again, back to that. Hard water efflorescence, they're separate. Efflorescence, F9, efflo remover. It's actually efflorescence remover, but they also call it F9, uh, F9 efflo. Eflo, efflo, whatever. Anyway, back onto that. So, some of the chemicals that I use for hard water, my absolute, absolute favorite is going to be One Restore. Now, One Restore is a entire kind of glass, metal, stone, building, facade, concrete. It can restore basically everything. It is an acid. Don't let that scare you. Go, well, I'm not buying a jug of acid. It's not the, it's not who framed Roger Rabbit. You can't put something in there and have it come up just bone, right? Acids are super helpful in what we do. Uh, there's two big ones. The one is uh, One Restore, which I really, really like. The next one's Wind Cell 550, which is like kicked up a notch. I don't even use it. Again, not saying it's bad, but uh, it's it's pretty uh, strong. We'll say that. So One Restore used to be called Safe Restore, actually, if that makes any sense. But again, it's an acid. It's super, super concentrated. Uh, it does have a mix ratio on the bottle, but I use it ready to use or RTU, if you ever hear that. Uh, put it in a pump up sprayer. I buy a gallon or a gallon bottles. You can get it in bigger, you know, containers, but uh, gallons, it has like a year shelf life. I think they claim that it's longer than that, but uh, after a year, it starts to actually like crystallize kind of. And uh, not super awesome. So it kind of dies down after a while. So keep it fresh. Um, put it in a pump of a sprayer. When you're doing that on the glass, you go to a window. Now, when you're using one restore in general or any acids on glass, there's something that's called flashing the window. And um, the problem comes in when a window is super, super hot and you scrub it for that first time, you know how it instantly evaporates. You see almost steam come off that window. You have to flash a window before you put the acid on there because then what happens is if you don't do that, you leave a residue and you damage the window. So if you're doing windows and they're kind of hot, hit it with a hose first, cool it down a little bit, then go over with the Eflor, or with the uh, One Restore pump up sprayer, keep it wet, don't let it dry, let it sit for about 30 seconds. You can go up to a couple minutes and then hose it off. It literally is a spray on hose off chemical that works beautifully. I have had different jobs where I put an extra coat on. Again, I don't wait. I don't dwell as long as some people do. Um, but you can certainly let it dwell even longer and really, really hard stuff. You can almost catch a nail on. Uh, that is going to take some more chemicals. So go on it, do a couple coats, uh, but hose it off. It's an acid. And with that, you can dilute it down so that it's not harmful. So when you're done, you need to rinse the heck out of it with a garden hose. So rinse it, rinse it, rinse it, and uh, that will take it all off the glass. So when you put it on, put it on, let it stay wet, rinse it off, rinse it well. Now, one thing people always ask is, can I agitate it or use steel wool? No, don't do that. It doesn't even make sense to do it. It's the chemical that's doing the reaction, not the agitation to remove the dirt. So just let it on the glass, let it sit there and have it uh, take itself off kind of like that. Um, really, really cool product. Um, but there's another option and that's inside. So if you have a shower situation, usually people always ask to, hey, they asked me to take it off. How do I take that off? Do not use One Restore indoors. The fumes suck. I thought I was smarter than at one time and uh, learned that really, really quick. It does not work indoors, so do not use it inside. When you go inside, you have to use more of a paste solution uh, or something like a BioClean. BioClean is another product that uh, removes hard water, but it's on the inside. 
I don't think that the inside ones are as great as the One Restore. So I don't use them on the outside. I know there are people who do, but One Restore is a good one. Uh, Unger Rub Out is another one. Uh, Ettore has another paste style. With anything that has the word rub in it, or any of the paste type, you really, really need to do the agitation to really work it in. So they take a lot more work than some of the spray-on acids that just kind of do their thing. One of the big things is that uh, the more work you do, the longer it takes, the more you should get charged, but you can't really charge more than the normal price anyway. So it makes sense to use the right products. Now, there is a product that is called the Mr. Hard Water. It is a automatic, not automatic, not automatic. What am I saying? It's like a uh, tool function. I'm having a brain fart. I'm sorry. But it you use a tool basically like a rotary tool and take it off. Just like a glass renew. Which, by the way, uh, Mr. Hard Water is pretty cool. Uh, super simple setup. It does what it does. Um, it works really, really well. Not cheap, but it's a really nice system. Uh, the next step is that glass renew. Now, glass renew. I've talked about glass renew. Not only are the people super, super cool. But Glass Renew stuff is phenomenal. Their main kit comes in a Pelican, like, bomb-proof military spec case. It's absolutely awesome. When you pull up to a job, you open this case up. Everything is foam cut, so everything's got its space. Like a, uh, like a James Bond movie. It's absolutely awesome. The equipment works ridiculously well. That system is actually made for uh, graffiti tags, acid tags... Hard water, but more importantly, on top of all that, scratches. So if you scratch glass or somebody's got glass scratches, you can take all that out with a glass renew. Now, the monster kit by glass renew is three grand. Um, they do have less ones from there, but um, glass renew is really, really good. So if, you, if you're into that or you want to try to do any restoration stuff, go the glass renew route. Their stuff is phenomenal. Their stuff is amazing, and uh, it's really good stuff. But... Those are kind of the, the, the classes, if you will. Outside only, you're doing a, a one restore, in my opinion. Inside, you're using like a BioClean, my opinion. Unger Rub Out also works pretty well, but those ones, you really got to work it. I've tried it on my own shower. I've tried everything, and uh, they're not fun. Glass Renew uh, is going to work the best. Uh, Mr. Hard Water, again, when you're using an orbital like that, that takes all the work. So you're still getting the agitation in there. The polishes are amazing, and it just takes it off. It's expensive though so those are uh those are my kind of go-to ones by the way if you're interested in scratches a scratch removal check that out on uh, uh just type in glass renew and that will kind of uh show you some stuff uh, go to windowcleaner.com of course or on their website pretty awesome system um but pricing finally pricing what do we charge remember we talked about before don't worry about charging what you need to charge for that. Now, I start at $20 a pane uh, for restoration, and that is mild restoration. When it goes up from there, it gets higher. Now, I have had buildings, entire buildings, um, where you are charging ridiculous amounts of money, and in your brain, you're like, I'm, no one's going to pay this. But they're like, yeah, of course. Like We want to have it back up to par. So um, it's... It's something that's going to take time. You need to know knowledge. You have to have the knowledge to do it. You have to have the chemicals to do it. So charge accordingly. Um, just a little bit of um, throwing around some awesomeness. Uh, there's a guy named Kurt Kempton. You guys know him from Responsibid. Now, when he owned a window cleaning company, he used One Restore. Uh, at the time, it might have still been called Safe Restore. Uh, but he used that for the biodomes. He restored the entire biodome complex, all of the biodomes. He went through like... Five 55-gallon drums of the stuff. It was crazy. But if you think there's no market for it, there definitely is uh, on the restoration side. So it's really something. Hard water is everywhere. You have to kind of find where it is and how to take it off. But those are the, those are the big things that I see. Now, I saw before and after pictures that somebody posted on a, another hard water thing that I saw on Facebook. And they just posted their before and afters. If you ever want to see some really, really cool before and afters, hard water is it. Because hard water is like white. So on a window, it's white spotted everywhere and then crystal clear. There's some amazing pictures out there. If you have hard water stain before and afters on your website, link them down below 
on Facebook. If you're watching, I'm not Facebook, YouTube, if you're watching, so people can check them out. They're absolutely super awesome. And another thing, by the time this video comes out, it's going to be Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone who celebrates Thanksgiving and happy Thursday to everybody who doesn't. And I always uh, talk about this, the one reason that I don't swear also, um, but window cleaning, there are so many Jehovah's Witnesses in window cleaning, like literally 50%. It's a time thing, I think. So I always try not to say, hey, uh, happy holidays is always nice. But for those of you who uh, aren't celebrating, tell me also on uh, YouTube, tell me if you're working or not. Because here's a big thing. When Thanksgiving comes, Christmas comes, all these big name holidays where the majority of people kind of take off or have off of work at least, even if they're not celebrating, do you still work on those holidays or do people just not want you in their home? I'd love to know. Uh, I'd love to hear it. So comment down below. What's up to all of you, by the way? More importantly, if you want window cleaning supplies, which all of us need a man, have me do it. I would love to be your rep. I want to be your personal rep. I want to be in your phone as Jersey. I'm your only Jersey you know. And you can always text me, call me when there's questions. If you need stuff, I got people who just text me and be like, yo, I need huck towels. I need a pro basic 30 foot. And then I also need a scraper. They just text me that. And then I put it in, make it super simple. Hopefully I make it go faster for you. And also it doesn't cost you any extra to have me put your orders in. It just gives me then credit. And that's how I buy luxurious luxurious gifts for my wife luxurious we're eating steak for dinner so it's kind of a big deal no but i do thank you guys for uh helping me out and uh, those of you who are super super loyal thank you so very much it's like super high five for all of you so uh 862-312-2026 is my cell phone call me text me whatever i want to be your rep no more shameless plug go out there and uh, start in hard water. Do some restoration. Play around with it. But more importantly, until next week, go out there and be epic.